Welcome back to Student of the Gun Homeroom. I am your favorite professor, Paul Markle, and thanks for joining us today. Now today we're going to talk about open carry versus concealed carry. Yes, it's another one of those subjects that gun people like to argue about. Well, before we get into the uh, open carry debate or the concealed carry versus open debate, I want to say one thing. If we, as gun people, as people who are supposed to be members of the choir, if we would spend half the energy fighting against those people that are trying to disarm us, as we do arguing amongst ourselves, we might actually get somewhere. Uh, think about that. How much time do you spend arguing uh, with your, your buddies or your acquaintances at the gun shop about stance and caliber and, and 1911 versus Glock versus SIG versus whatever? We spend a lot of time and we waste a lot of energy arguing amongst ourselves when there is a common enemy that legitimately doesn't care whether you have a Glock, a Sig, a Colt, a 1911, a revolver. They don't want you to have any of those things. So you might want to address some of your energy to dealing with that situation instead of arguing with your buddies over, oh, I'd never own a Glock or I'd never own a 1911. So be that as it may, and I digress. Open carry versus concealed carry. The reason that I'm talking about it today is because Mississippi just amended their concealed carry law. Now, the original law had some, some kind of arbitrary or confusing verbiage in it about when is a gun legitimately concealed. And so what they did, what the legislators did, is they went in and they cleaned up the language so it wouldn't be confusing. Well, what that's going to do is it's going to turn Mississippi into a uh, concealed carry, open carry option state. I believe the date is July 1st, 2013. So, and every time this happens, every time in the United States of America, oops, I hit my new microphone stand. Every time in the United States of America, uh, a state allows its citizens to carry open. People have kittens. And it's not just necessarily the anti-gun people that have kittens. It's a lot of pro-gun people that have kittens, too. And what you need to understand or think about is when you pro-gun people, when you start having kittens about people open carrying, aren't you falling right into the same camp as the we can't allow people to own guns or, or carry guns because there'll be bloodshed on the streets and people will be shooting at each other at red lights and stop signs and blah, 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 blah. Well, for all of you guys who think that open carry is a horrible idea and I would never do that and it's tactically unsound and all that, I present to you the example of Arizona. Now, if you know anything about Arizona, or you know anything about the rules, is they are actually a constitutional carry state. And what does that mean? Well, that means that if you are legally allowed to own a firearm, if you can lawfully possess a firearm, you can lawfully carry one, whether it's concealed or not concealed. I've spent a lot of time in Arizona. I don't live there, but I've spent a lot of time there. I've done a lot of training there. And uh, this, I mean, years ago, probably 10 or more years ago, I was in Arizona uh, attending the Gunsight Training Academy, and it's been way more than 10 years now because uh, that was back before they fed you on site. What we did is we, you know, we'd go to the range in the morning, shoot, 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 everyone break for lunch, we'd get in our cars, and we'd go out into town to the local diner, eat lunch, and then go back. And Gunsight's policy is, look, all right, we're breaking for lunch, Put your firearm in the condition that you want it to be while you're off the range, whatever that is. You know, if you're afraid to carry a gun, take it off and put it in the case. But if you understand or respect what we're teaching you, just load it, put it in your holster and drive on and leave it alone. It'll be okay as long as it's sitting in that holster. And we, we went out to the restaurant and there's probably eight, ten of us or so. And, uh, you know... The, the locals didn't have any problem. You know who had a problem with it? The tourists. And I like to call op open carry Operation Hippie Scare. That's right. You heard it from me. And Operation Hippie Scare is essentially this. You can tell who the liberal hippie people are because when you walk into a restaurant, three or four of you, and you all have guns on, they go, ah, 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 those people have guns on. And that happened like 10, 11, 12, whatever. whatever. First time I went out uh, to Arizona, we were in a restaurant. This couple was over in the corner, and they're, they're pointing, and they called the waitress over and pointed. And the waitress said, it's okay, honey. This is Arizona. Don't worry about it. Uh, recently, I was, in, uh, I was in Prescott, 
and I went into a Starbucks coffee shop. Yes, they have Starbucks in Prescott. And a uh, guy comes in with his family, a mo dad, mom, you know, little boy, littler boy, you know. They walk in there, and dad's got a Smith & Wesson uh, semi-auto in what looks to me like a... I'm going to go ahead and say it was a Don Hume holster. I might have been wrong. But he's open carrying. They rode their bikes up to the Starbucks. They got off their little bikes. They walked in. And the locals didn't think anything of it. But, you know, Prescott is a tourist destination. What do you have? You got a lot of California hippies that want to go to Prescott to appreciate the high desert. And what do the hippies do? The hippies go, oh, oh. well, open carry is essentially Operation Hippie Scare because it makes hippies and anti-gun hoplophobes it makes them identify themselves they they basically they profile themselves because they peed on their legs now when is you know i'm not going to address tactics because most people out there that talk about tactics don't have a daggum clue what they're talking about it amazes me people go out there and they're like well it's tactically unsound it's like first of all how long have you been carrying a gun for a living and if having a gun exposed is tactically unsound, every cop in a uniform in America is tactically unsound. You say, well, no, no, no. It's okay for cops to do it because we expect them to have guns on. And, well, no, from a tactical stand, I'm not talking about a legal standpoint. From a tactical standpoint, you tell me I shouldn't open carry because the bad guy will see me open carrying, key in on me, and go beat me over the head and take my gun from me. Why don't they do that to cops every day? Well, well, because is it because of their polyester uniforms? Because the polyester uniform provides this like shield around them that prevents bad guys from jumping them to take their guns. Uh, I, I have news for you that that happens often in America, where bad guys jump cops in uniform and take their guns. And uh, it's, it has nothing to do with the polyester uniform. It's the level of the bad guy. If you are the only one in your jurisdiction, you're the only one in your little community that goes around carrying, you are a nut bar. You're labeled as a crazy person. Open carry doesn't work if it's just you. If you're the only guy in Walmart with a gun on, even if it's legal, you're a nut bar and it doesn't work. How does open carry work? Open carry works when legitimate lawful good people citizens open carry when you have two four eight twenty people in walmart carrying guns or in the restaurant or whatever that's when it works because what did you just do you overwhelm the potential number of bad guys in that area if it's just you all by yourself open carrying and you don't know who the bad guys are okay that's a, a you know that's an issue obviously but if there's 20 people in a restaurant and all of those people are open carrying and two crooks walk in, you think the crooks are going to think, let's take this restaurant down. Mm, probably not. So concealed carry, yes, in certain environments and in, actually in most environments, you know, especially urban areas, it's better to conceal because you know nobody's any the wiser. The gun appears when you need it. Drive on. But if lots of people do it, if lawful, responsible citizens do it, then we remove some of the stigma from gun owners. If, let's say, how many people do you know are kind of, they're not crazy hoplophobe liberals, but they're kind of that, uh, I don't know, guns make me uncomfortable kind of like people. Well, do you think maybe if those people saw you and lots of other responsible citizens carrying a gun, that they would be less afraid of people who own guns? Perhaps that's something to think about. Now, from a legal standpoint, and this is the last thing I'm going to leave you guys with, and a lot of you probably haven't thought about it, but from a legal standpoint, many states that issue concealed carry permits, particularly the ones that are discretionary, you know, where the, the government has to interview you and talk to you and do a six-month background check, and then they go, all right, we'll let you do it just this one time. A lot of discretionary states, and even some shall issue states as well, uh, have very, very strict uh, rules about your gun ever being exposed. That's the whole, I'm wearing a sport coat and the wind catches it and it, whew, the wind blows my jacket open and my gun is exposed. In some states, if you have a con concealed carry permit or pistol permit and your handgun is ever exposed to public view, 
you can be charged with menacing. You can lose your permit because your shirt tail got caught up and you exposed the butt of your gun. Bam, you just lost it. Or you could be arrested and charged with menacing or other you know, charges. Well, what happens when you have an open carry or an option state, concealed or open, is if you have that oops moment, uh, if your jacket blows open or if your, you know, your shirt tail comes up, yes, it might be embarrassing, but there's a difference between embarrassing and unlawful or breaking the law. In some states, if you have a concealed carry permit and you expose your pistol without due cause, you know, such as I'm in jeopardy and fear for my life, if you expose it, and someone calls on the phone, they're like, "I saw this guy and he has a gun." They come up and they find out that that person saw your gun, they can charge you and you can lose your permit. Now in a state that's an open carry or a constitutional carry like Arizona, Tennessee and so forth, yeah, like I said, you might be embarrassed, but you're not gonna go to jail over the wind blowing your jacket open. So that's something you might wanna consider. All you I hate open carry guys, you might wanna think, well, maybe when I'm concealed carrying, if I accidentally or someone sees the butt of my gun or they see an imprint of the gun under my shirt and they get scared, I don't become a de facto criminal. So think about that, just some stuff to think about. Uh, I don't imagine I'm gonna change lots of your minds, but hey, take the seeds, let them grow. If you don't like them, throw them away. If you do, drive on. Now for all things Student of the Gun, where are you gonna go? You're gonna go to studentofthegun.com and if you haven't been paying attention and you don't know about Student of the Gun Radio, Shame on you, because we have Student of the Gun Radio, and uh, Episode 5 will be up on Monday, Monday the 8th of April. <laughs> so check it out. For all things Student of the Gun, go to studentofthegun.com. I almost forgot. We're going to, you know, we do normally do a recommended reading. Well, I'm running out of books, kids. And <laughs> so what we're going to do is... We're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to do one recommended reading and one recommended product per week. So how about that? Now, my recommended product today is the Aimpoint PRO Optic. And I'll hold it up there for you guys to see the Aimpoint Pro. The PRO stands for Patrol Rifle Optic. It's a red dot optic from Aimpoint. And here's the deal, folks. When it comes to high quality red dot sights, the Aimpoint PRO is probably the best value going hands down. I ain't kidding. Uh, if you've ever priced an Aimpoint, you know they're not cheap. Price an M4 or a Comp, you know, uh, a Comp M2 or what have you, M3, uh, they're not cheap. But they're rhino tough. They're used by the U.S. military and the Special Forces. So, yeah, they must have a little bit going for them. The Aimpoint PRO, it comes with the battery, it comes with the mount, it comes with everything you need to take it out of the box and put it on your rifle. And as an added benefit, it's it's less than $500. If you look online, you can probably find them around four in change, which is a heck of a value for a good, solid piece of optic. And I think the battery life is something insane like 20, 30,000 hours of runtime or something like that. So uh, check it out. It's the Aimpoint PRO or Patrol Rifle Optic. Mm -hmm.